Hi Rowcroft Runners, it's Wendy here from the Fit Movement coming to you in association with Rowcroft Hospice helping you to prepare for your 10k and half marathon. If we haven't met before, I'm the founder of the Fit Movement in Devon and online. I work with women to help them gain a strong core for their chosen sports. I'm also a run leader with my local running club, the Teambridge Trotters in Newton Abbott. With your race just around the corner, Rowcroft and I have created this video to help you in two parts. Part one is your warm up and part two are my top tips for getting ready for race day. If you watch to the end of the video, I'll share with you a special savings code that you can use to work with me that's valid until the end of November. Don't forget to tag Rowcroft and me in your photos and videos showing you completing your 10K and half marathon so that we can congratulate you. On behalf of Rowcroft, thank you for your support. So welcome to part one of the video where I'm gonna take you through your warm up. This is where we're gonna limber up and get you race ready. And if you're watching this on a mobile device, you can take this video of me out with you, watch the video, warm up, and then go out and do your run. I've shared with you some of my favorite warm up exercises, but please feel free to add your own. Now don't skip this part. A warm up has been shown to improve sports performance, but also reduce the risk of injury. We're gonna be mobilizing your joints. Um, we're gonna be warm raising your heart rate, and then we're gonna be doing some simple running movements. If you're wondering sort of what effort you need to put into this warm up, then I want you to break out into mild sweat, nothing more than that. And then depending on the length of the race you're running, we're looking to warm up for about at least five minutes longer if you're doing a longer race. Remember, I'm not there with you, so if something doesn't feel right, feels a bit painful, then please stop that exercise and move on to the next one for you. Okay, so starting with our warm up, then we're gonna do some head stretches. We're gonna go forward and back. And I want you to work within a normal range of movement, okay, so we're not pushing just working to where it feels comfortable with a little bit of a stretch. And we're working the major joints to release tension and tightness so that you're comfortable running. So we're gonna go forwards and back, chin to chest, and then back, okay. And then from here, we're gonna go side to side. Now we're bringing ear down to shoulder, keeping that shoulder down, so keeping that space. From here, we're just going to do some head rolls again, working within a normal range. And we'll go back the other way. Next, we're going to move on to shoulders. So, we're just going to roll those shoulders forward. Okay, we're going to go 10 forwards and trying to count and talk at the same time. That's six in my book. <laughs> and then we're going to go back the other way, so turn backwards. Okay, and you may notice a little bit of crunching as you're doing this, and that's okay. And it may seem a little bit odd that we're warming up the upper body when we're using our legs to run for running, but we want that sort of nice relaxed posture all the way through the body as we're running. So we're then going to make this a little bit bigger, so we're going to do 10 circles forward, getting gradually bigger with the arms, okay, and then sweeping the ears. And then we're going to go backwards the other way, okay? Going from big circles to little circles. Again, for about 10. Next, we're going to do something called a dynamic clean. So we're going to have arms overhead, palms together, and we're just going to go out to the side. So we're coming over to one side, arms are going left, leg is going right. And again, we're going to do 10. And we're just stretching out that lateral Again, we're working within your normal range of movement. And then from here, we're going to flip everything over and do 10 the other side. Next up then, a box of yawns. Now what we want to do is just open up the chest a little bit, again for running, so that when we're moving, we've got a nice, um, smooth movement through the upper body as we rotate as we run. 
So you're just going to have arms out straight, open up the chest, so you're self-selecting where you want to go with this move. Okay, so just stretch across the chest. So we're moving on to hip circles then, and we're going to do 10 one way and 10 the other. So we want feet about hip width, maybe a little bit wider. We're going to start off with small circles, going clockwise, and we're going to get progressively larger. Up six, seven, and we're just keeping legs straight, nine, ten. And we're going to go back the other way, wide circles, so little circles. And for some reason, this side always feels a little bit weirder. to the knees. We want feet together, knees together, same principle, so hands on knees. And we're going for ten. Eight, nine, ten, and then back the other way again, feeling slightly weird. So we're moving down a little bit further then, we're moving down onto the ankles, so you may wish to hold onto something uh, depending on what your balance is like. So we're going to lift one foot up, we're going to do ten circles one way. And then ten the other, and all we're doing with these circular movements is lubricating the joints ready for running. Well done, and then we're going to swap to the second side. So again, this is where my balance needs a bit of concentration. Eight, nine, ten, and then back the other way. Okay, so now we're moving on to lunges. We're going to do a forward lunge and a twist. Now, depending on the space that you have available, you can either do them on the spot, and I'll demonstrate that for you, or you can do walking lunges. And we're going to do 20 in total. So let me show you the on the spot version. We're going to start with feet hip width, we're going to come forward, lunge down, and then rotate over the front leg. And then coming back up to standing, coming down with the second leg, rotating out. And if you're doing the walking version, if you've got that space, same principle, just going to lunge down, rotate over the front leg, come up, step through, lunge back down, second leg. Now the important thing to note is that you're twisting out over the front leg of your upper body. So let's do that together. We start with feet about hip width, bending at both knees, coming down low, twisting out over the front leg, back up to standing or carrying on walking. Okay, so try and keep those hips even. and then just check that the knees aren't rolling in. So you want the knee placed over about the second toe. And make that six. Okay, so if you're feeling a little bit unsteady, you don't have to take a particularly long lunge. Okay, you can take a shorter step. And you don't have to come down so low either. Okay, so we're halfway on my reckoning. Last four. I'm using my front toes to push myself up. Last two, and each time I'm coming back with feet hit width so that my pelvis is balanced.
Now the next one we're going to do might look a bit odd, but it's very good for activating the glutes. So we're going to walk backwards, check there's nothing behind you before you go. And what we're going to do, we're going to walk backwards to activate the glutes and we're going to just cross one leg over the other, like so. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> Next one we're going to do then is our side lunge. So we're going to be just warming up those adductor muscles, the inner thigh muscles, often get overlooked when we're out running. So we're going to start with feet at hip width. We're going to just work the one side first and we're going to do 10 together. Okay, so we're going to take a step to the side, feet are lined up with each other. I'm going to come over almost like a squat. So how I'm positioned, I've got um, knee is over my toes, hip is over my knee. Just making sure I'm not twisted or leaning forward. I'm just checking that toes and heels are pointing forward too. So I'm going to go one, then ten one side, two. Okay, so it's almost like a squat. You should feel the stretch here. Okay, just check your positioning. Check that front knee. Okay, so that should be over the second toe thereabouts. And just check that you're still square. both facing forward. And then we're going to do undo the second side. So again, feet start at the hip width, and out to the side. Okay, so feeling that stretch again for the inner second thigh. Checking the hips are square. I'm going to count the fingers now and draw them. Okay, and then just check that hip, knee, and ankle are lined up. So another five. Moving on to the next one then, and that's hamstring swings. So again, you may need something to hold on to, depending on uh, what your balance is like. And if you're holding on with your right hand, you're going to work the left leg first, and then we'll turn around and do the second leg. Okay, and I'll show you this from front and side view. So we're going to bring that knee up high, and then swing the leg back. So it's almost like a circular motion. Let me show you that side on as well, and then we'll go through together. Okay, so going that flat surface, leg goes up. Circular motion back, relaxing the toes of the foot that's flat on the ground, that'll give you a better base. So let's do that one together. Okay, this is particularly good um, if you're prone to hamstring injuries. Just to get it warmed up before we go out for our race. With this one, make sure that you're not overarching the back, okay, so the back is relatively still. You're not hyper-extending the spine to do this exercise. We're going to swap over to the second foot. Again, find somewhere that's reasonably flat, okay, holding on if you need to. And as you're working through this one, you can increase the range. So again, I'm not hyper-extending my back. Relaxing those toes on the front, trying to count my leg. Last two. Okay, so moving on, if you're not already warm, we're going to be moving on to a few little exercises to increase the heart rate and to sort of mimic some of those running movements. So the first one's called Boots to Glutes and the keys in the name. Okay, so we're going to bring those legs up. Okay, hands by the bottom doesn't matter if you can't get that far, just come to where you can. And what we're doing here is lubricating the knee joint ready for running. It's very difficult to talk <laughs> and uh, warm up at the same time and keep count, but I'll give it a go. I'm going to go for 20 more. Eight, nine, ten, last ten. one then and then I'll give you something else that I just want you to do before we go off. 
So the final one of the warm-up exercises, we're going to do a high knee, okay? So you can come up onto the toes and your foot that's in contact with the ground. Okay, you can do this either on the spot, okay? Coming up, using those arms to help guide. Or you can do this, you've got a bit of space. Like so. You don't need to come up high off the ground, you can keep your uh, long leg, you can keep those toes in contact with the ground. You just want a bit of movement. So I'll do this on the spot, you can do this moving if you've got the space to do so. Great. So we've gone through these exercises. Hopefully you're feeling a little bit more uh, ready to go out and do your run. The final thing I want you to do is either in the sort of the three to five minutes before you go out and start your run is just to either do a little bit of power walking. Maybe if you've got steps at home, up and down the steps for three to five minutes or go out for a very light jog, you know, very light jog before you start your race. And then most importantly, when you've done your race, so you've got your warm up, go out and do your race and then when you get to the end please remember to cool down. Welcome to part two of the video, race tips. Thank you to all my running friends who contributed to this section. Here are my top 10 tips. Tip number one, wear something that you're comfortable running in. It's very tempting to go out in a brand new top, maybe some new running shoes and socks, but there's nothing worse than finding out that those seams on your t-shirt irritate or those socks rub or that you haven't yet broken in those shoes. So wear something that feels very comfortable to go out and do your run. Tip number two, familiarise yourself with the route that you're going to be taking. By now you should know where you're running unless you're looking for a few surprises out on the course. If you need to, go out and recce the route. You can cycle it, walk it or drive it. It's handy to know where the hilly sections are, if you're running on the road where it's a safe place to cross and then if you're running on the trails, where to avoid the routes. This is how I got this scar. Um, so yeah, very good tip there. Now, if you haven't got time to go out, one of the things I do use if I'm short of time is a uh, route planner. You can get some free software downloaded or otherwise Google Maps, just so I've got a visual image of where I'm running and I know where I need to turn. Tip number three, prepare in advance. Don't leave it to race day to do all your final prep. Lay all your kit out calmly the day before. Check the weather forecast ahead, see what the weather's going to be doing. Do you need sunscreen? Do you need a cap because it's sunny or raining? Or do you need sunglasses to run in? Make sure that you've got everything sorted so that you can just get up and go on the day. Tip number four, get up early so you can have your breakfast at least an hour to an hour and a half before you go off and run. Give yourself plenty of time for your food to go down. Make sure you eat foods that you're familiar with that aren't going to upset your tummy when you go out and race. And make sure that you allow enough time so that you can go to loo uh, as many times as you need to before you go off. Tip number five, make sure you're sufficiently hydrated before race day, particularly in the couple of days leading up to the race. And if you need to take extra fluids on board because it's going to be warm on race day, please do. Now make sure that you're sipping uh, regularly throughout the day. Don't try downing loads in one go or just waking up on race day and then remembering that you haven't hydrated. You don't want to be taking this lot on board and then running around with water swishing in your tummy. It makes it very uncomfortable. So as I say, just a few days before the race, make sure you're getting enough water in your system. Tip number six. Now this was very popular with the runners that I canvassed. Don't go off too fast. Even with the virtual race, it's possible to do this. And I put my hand up and say guilty as charged. Now, usually at the start of the race, there's a little bit of adrenaline in the system. So we tend to go off a little bit too quickly, feel like our feet are flying. And then partway through, we run out of steam. And it all feels a bit like hard work. I don't want that for you. So I want you to go off a little bit slower, maybe for the first mile. Go off gently, get the breathing under control. Maybe run the first half of the race slower than you would the second. Second half of the race, pick up the pace a little bit more. And if you feel that you've still got something in the tank as you near the finish line, then of course step it up and make your way all the way in. Tip number seven. So if you're prone to chafing around the bar line, around the elastic in your pants, or if you've got lining in your shorts and there's elastic there and it rubs, Vaseline is your new best friend, so make sure you use it. Tip number eight, find your mantra. If you need something to distract you while you're running around on the course, or you're going through a bit of a tough patch, but I know you've got this right, then find something that you can e easily repeat to yourself as you're running around in time with your steps. So I personally like every step takes me closer to my goal, which works for running and everything else in life. So either find one for yourself 
or you can borrow mine. Tip number nine, know why you're running. Now this is powerful and very personal. It's something that I use when I need some oomph behind me to complete the course. You may need to dig a little bit deeper as you approach the finishing line. So remember why you're running and who will benefit from uh, you completing the course today. And this one gets me here every time and I, it helps me get over that finish line. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, have fun. If this is your first 10K or your first half marathon, don't run for time, just run for fun. Take it steady and get, make sure that you get all the way around and run your own race because whatever time you get, it will be your PB, your personal best. And don't forget to celebrate with friends and family when you cross that finish line and remember to tag both Rowcroft and me in so we can celebrate with you. So here's that savings code that I promised you at the start of the video. If you head over to my website and make a purchase, if you enter the code Rowcroft15, so that's capital R, Rowcroft15, all one word, at the checkout, that will save you 15% off all my services. On behalf of Rowcroft Hospice, thank you for all your support in helping them to continue to provide specialised care to people in South Devon. The only thing left for me to say is good luck and have a good run.